software as a service is being heavily adopted, and there's some really good reasons for that. Um, it costs less money, right? Uh, we're saving money on infrastructure build and software deployment. Uh, we have expedient uh, time to market. We're able to deploy things in a much quicker fashion than if we were building, testing, and deploying uh, infrastructure and software on, on premise. Uh, we also get to uh, offload uh, service level agreements and uh, relationships to experts out there. But what does software as a service and the adoption mean to an identity and access management ecosystem? How does that affect uh, an organization's ability to uh, extend their policies out to these SaaS providers and uh, assure that there is visibility to those, uh, those policies. Uh, one of the first issues that uh, tends to come up uh, when an organization is starting to build a portfolio of SaaS applications is, uh, how do I provision these applications? So internally, uh, an identity management lifecycle inside of the organization would be concerned with provisioning authoritative information about users and their entitlements to internal IT resources. Uh, but what happens when those resources are now external and we have applications such as Salesforce or Google or uh, ADP and, and so forth and so on? Uh, and we're concerned with making sure that authoritative information gets from our human resources systems and our policies about those individuals get enforced on those third-party applications. They're no longer in our data centers. They're no longer necessarily within our direct control. We can't physically touch them. Um, but identity and access management technologies and the protocols evolving around federation do allow us to provision that type of information to these SaaS providers. The next major topic uh, around SaaS typically is about unified single sign-on. The ability to allow individuals to have a unified credential that can be used inside of the organization as well as outside of the organization. So if I get to work and I log into my desktop, I shouldn't have to necessarily log in six or seven or two dozen times additionally to do my work throughout the day regardless of the application that I'm touching. And that application may live internal to the organization or may live external uh, outside of the organization such as a SaaS provider. So identity and access management technologies uh, should be concerned with leveraging federation technologies that enable them to uh, grant their users a unified single sign-on experience. As we continue to push responsibilities in the identity and access management realm out to partners, specifically in the software as a service space, it's important to understand how policies are enforced and what the terms and conditions are around the SaaS applications that you're acquiring. Understanding whether these SaaS application providers are going to allow you to enforce policies from an internal perspective uh, into their domain is important. Uh, so it's, it's uh, incredibly important for uh, folks who are concerned with reviewing service level agreements and terms and conditions of these contracts to ask questions around identity and access management. Uh, the ability to uh, pull data specifically back out of that SaaS environment for visibility's sake. Uh, you're going to be concerned with governance concepts such as recertifying entitlements on SaaS applications, much the same way that you're concerned with recertification and governance activities on internal applications. Right now, from a trend perspective, we're seeing SaaS providers uh, adopting support for unified single sign-on through protocols like SAML and WS Federation, OpenID, uh, in a very uh, uh, proactive manner. Um, however, we're still seeing spotty and inconsistent support for things like user provisioning. So these are areas to look out for uh, when you're talking to your SaaS uh, providers or prospective SaaS providers.